Hi, I'm Arlene, and the title for this session is Tips for Connecting with Students While Teaching Remotely. I'm going to close my camera so that you'll be able to see the content on the remaining slides. First of all, I teach in the Nutrition, Dietetics, and Food Sciences Department at Utah State, and I am on the Logan campus. I love the outdoors and being with my family, and I'm excited to participate in this conference with you. Just a note before we start, I've added some additional material to a Canvas course, and it includes the slides for this session, as well as the other session that I'll be doing for the ETE conference. If you would like to access some additional material in addition to these slides afterwards, then you're welcome to add your email address to a Google Sheet. And so here's a link down here to do that. I'll add you to my Canvas course, and then you'll be able to click on that link and uh, find some ideas that we explore today. The purpose of this session is to both discuss and demonstrate some evidence-based ways to connect with students throughout the semester in a variety of remote settings. And so here's an outline of where I'd like to go. Uh, mostly I'd like to review some of the things that the research says in terms of an instructor to student interaction, and then also talk about some ideas of ways to Im improve that uh, connection with students throughout the semester. So let's talk, start with some context and considerations. Um, I've included a quote here from Kathy Griffins. I think she's a K through 12 teacher, but I think the last part of her quote especially applies to college instructors also. She says, create your classroom community first, and then the learning will naturally fall into place. And I think that's true when students feel connected and that they belong and that they're kind of settled in a course and they're more likely to engage and persist and invest in learning. So Brene Brown defines connection as the energy that is created between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, and when they can give and receive without judgment. I think she's definitely someone that um, a lot of people identify with. And I, I agree with this quote. To me, the key is to acknowledge and respect students and create an environment that's safe. One more quote that I'll share from Josh Eiler before we dive into some ideas. Uh, he talks about five things that um, foster learning in humans. And one of those things is sociality. And he defines that as our need to connect with other people. So. According to him, this drives our learning in many essential ways. Sure, we can learn things on our own, but we rarely learn them as deeply because so much of our learning derives from our social nature and our visceral need to communicate with other people. Understanding the complexities of our student sociality is therefore necessary if we are to design effective educational experiences. To me, that's that means that in a online class especially, I need to be sure that I'm creating opportunities for students con to connect uh, because a lot of times in a remote setting that can feel really lonely or overwhelming or daunting for a student and they need to know that they're not just on their own. So there are three types of connections that you're trying to facilitate as a teacher. One is a student to student connection with their peers. Another one is an instructor to student connection with you. And then the third one is a student to content connection with the material that's in your class. Today, I just wanna focus on the instructor to student relationship because of our time, but also because in the literature, that relationship is something that's really focused on and uh, it's something that's key. So. Here's an example of some research from 2016 that looked at online courses in a college setting. And one of their concluding thoughts was this, the only course design element that significantly and positively influenced student grades was quality instructor to student interactions. According to students, quality was defined as an instructor who cares. So I think that's a pretty powerful statement. And it also says that if you're if you have quality instructor to student interactions, but even if your course is lacking in some other areas, uh, your students are gonna be fine. 
So here are three resources that uh, have been helpful to me, and I hope that you'll check out. Uh, I'll go through them kind of fast because of my time limit. But number one would be the new webinar series from the Academic Instructional Services Office at Utah State. Uh, this was created in partnership with the Empowering Teaching Excellence uh, program, as well as the Center for S Student Analytics. Basically, right now, it's a series of, se of seven videos that talk about ways to be a more effective teacher, especially in a remote learning environment. And I hope that you've discovered them. If you haven't, please review them. They've been so helpful to me. And they also really emphasize uh, these four characteristics that um, we see in effective remote teachers. By the way, these four characteristics were identified by USU students in a survey that was conducted spring 2020. So just last semester when we were all asked to go online. And these are the four things that came up repeatedly as far as um, being effective and helpful for students. So having instructors who are present, organized, timely, and flexible is what they really valued. A second resource would be Barbie Honeycutt's material. She came to USU as an ETE seminar series speaker in 2017. And right now she um, has a podcast series called Lecture Breakers. A lot of those podcasts focus on creating a classroom community or environment that supports um, learning and engagement. And so I recommend those. The third resource that I really like is uh, Michelle Pacansky Brock's material. Uh, she's written a book, but she's also a, has a website that focuses on humanizing the online space uh, for, for students. And here are her three pillars. She really focuses on instructor presence and then awareness of students and then empathy towards students. And so presence means evidence to your students that you're there in the course with them, that you're interacting, that you're, um, that you know what they're, they're doing and what their questions are and that, um, that you're not just a robot who set up the course on the front end and now they're, and then just left it to them. Awareness means that you know your students and that you can anticipate what their needs will be. And empathy means that you're approachable and that you're willing to uh, provide extra support and accommodations when necessary. And so here's an infographic that uh, kind of illustrates some of those concepts. And it also provides some ideas in the pink box there on ways that you can uh, integrate that in your class. And so I'd encourage you to look at that a little closer later on. So I hope you can see a connection between these two things. Both of them really encourage presence and then awareness can include being organized and timely and then empathy uh, includes being flexible and working with students. And all together, it comes back to this quote by Dr. Brene Brown, where implementing those principles help students feel seen, heard, valued, and respected so that they can give and receive and contribute in your class. Uh, so let's go through a few ideas of things you can do throughout our semester. Here's two things you can do even before your class starts pre-semester. I know a lot of you already do this, but the first thing would be a welcome email or video. So here's a template suggested by Dr. Melissa Weller on stuff to include in an email to students even before your class starts. I like to send this out a week or two before classes start, um, but there's no hard fast rule on that. She recommends a personal introduction of yourself and of your course, and then also a summary of the course requirements and then your contact information in your email signature. So um, my students have responded to this really well in the past. I think it helps them kind of get their feet wet and helps them get excited for uh, what uh, what we'll be doing. This year I did a, a welcome video for the first time uh, rather than an email and I sent it in June pretty early on. So I sent it early because the format of our course had changed from a face-to-face -face class to a fully online class and I wanted students to be aware of that. 
And so I used Loom, which was it's really similar to Kaltura. It's just a screen capture system. And, uh, and I walk students through some things to expect. And so this is what that video included. It included a welcome statement, but also a quick description of the course. So they knew kind of what to anticipate and what to look forward to. I also talked about our delivery method and what online would mean for them and what uh, what they could anticipate. I also talked about the reason why it was switched to online only and gave them some resources to, to help them navigate that when our class starts. Then I walked through the course uh, materials that are required. I also let them know that I would be recording um, offering Zoom sessions and I let them know at what time, how long they would be, and, and uh, that, that they would be recorded. And then I ended with some reassurance and encouragement and acknowledged that um, an online class can be um, kind of scary or can it can cause you to feel a little bit apprehensive. And so I included some quotes from previous online students to uh, kind of help my incoming students uh, recognize that this can be a good experience and they can they can do this and uh, it will be OK. I, I included some closing thoughts as well to help them kind of get mentally prepared on what to expect so that they can kind of hit the ground running on uh, on the first week of class. The second thing that I really encourage and I think a lot of instructors do this is to have a good syllabus and a good course schedule. It's easy to read and follow and understand. I personally like color. I also like it to be in a calendar format. I realize that uh, Canvas builds a schedule for you and that you can put that in a calendar set, uh, setting on Canvas. And I still use that, but in addition, I like to create a PDF file for students that has colors on it and some text that's highlighted so that they can know what to really pay attention to. And I feel like it helps them stay on track and also helps send a message that um, that I'm invested. So at the beginning of the semester, here's idea number one, doing an instructor introduction. I hope that everyone does this. I, uh, I think this is something that students really look for, especially when class begins and especially if it's in an online format. Uh, Dr. Melissa Weller has some suggestions for an introduction video. She includes these elements in hers. She also says that she um, does a video that can be reused from year to year and across classes so that she doesn't have to keep recreating it every year. Uh, that, that, of course, is up to you and your personal preference. Um, for me, I generally do um, a bio sheet that includes some pictures rather than a video but either one will work. When I do my bio sheet, I try to have it model what I want students to do later on. So for example, in, in these two, I've responded to some get to know you questions. And then in a first assignment, I ask students those same get to know you questions about themselves. And then I show them that I've already done the same thing. And, and then it allows them to kind of connect with me and we can establish some things that we have in common. Here's another uh, idea where you just put up pictures in a, in a PowerPoint presentation, for example. I think pictures help humanize you and show that you're a real person, uh, but also it gives students a chance to see where you have some common ground. Here's one idea of something that I do the, uh, on, a, on a first day. I teach nutrition, so I like to know about students food preferences and uh, eating habits. And so I'll put a, a PowerPoint slide up like this and I'll say of these nine vegetables, which one do you like the most or which one do you eat most often or which one are you least likely to eat? And then they can share that with, uh, with me or with a neighbor. And then I also tell them what, what my favorite one is or, or uh, and that kind of helps establish, break some ice and establish a connection. Here's a few other ideas for, um, Getting to know students better and interacting early. A lot of instructors do uh, get to know you prompt on a discussion board, which is great. I would 
certainly encourage you to be active on that discussion board, however, and be responding to students' replies so that they can see that you're there. Um, also, weekly announcements and check-ins. Video postcards is something that Michelle Pekansky Brock encourages. Us. And basically, it's a, a short little video that you do on your phone in a place outside of your office or, or class. And it can include announcements or other things or just a message to your students that shows that you're thinking about them in your course. Um, here, down here are some uh, questions you can in include in a week one student, student survey or assignment that kind of helps you identify students who need a little more high touch or, um, or guidance from you. And, and then you can kind of prioritize needs. The other thing that I um, really like is that in Canvas, if you click on the people link, there is now some additional elements on that page at the top. One thing you can do is um, view and print student cards. Basically, it's just a, a collection of all of their profile pictures. And that's a little bit easier to access than their, your photo class roster and banner. And, and it's also going to be a picture that your student has selected. Uh, you can also email all students even before your class starts. This email is sent to their preferred email address that they've identified rather than just uh, in, in Canvas. And so that's a, a nice feature. And then you can also down your, download your class roster and start reaching out to students early on. Another thing that's important, especially at the beginning of the semester, is Canvas setup. I, I hope that the majority of you are using Canvas. The um, Center for Student Analytics recently completed a student insights report, and that includes some factors that show um, things that are really um, make a difference in helping students persist uh, through a class and, and through their education at USU. And Canvas design is one of those things that helps them. So. That report says that instructor use of design tools in Canvas is associated with higher course grades and with greater levels of persistence, especially for first generation students. And so if your Canvas course looks more like the one on the left, I would encourage you to make it look more like the one on the right. And there's lots of tools and resources to help you do that. You can reach out to someone at City and have an instructional designer help you. You can attend the workshops or you can um, have a colleague or a TA or someone help you make it a little bit more visually appealing and easier to navigate. And it will make a big difference. Here's uh, one I did of a, something to add to your Canvas course is kind of a course resource page, which is a one stop shop for everything on on mine. I include some uh, instruction PowerPoints where it has screenshots of different steps for a, an assignment or project and then things that they're supposed to do. So I include this in multiple places on Canvas, but everything ends up being on this course resources page so that it's easy to find for students who want to use it, uh, utilize that page. So the final thing that I'll talk about is communication throughout the semester and how to give instruction and feedback. Um, Dr. Travis Thurston uh, with ETE introduced me to this model recently. Uh, basically, it shows that you're trying to help students reach a level of independence, but you start by modeling or demonstrating something yourself and showing them uh, how to do something. And then, and then you do it together with your students. And then you have students do it together. And then your student is ready to do it on their own. And so I would recommend keeping that model in mind as you design your ass assignments and um, projects, and then maybe incorporating this idea from Karen Costa. She's the author of a book about uh, creating simple and sustainable videos. Her suggestion is to do a three-part video series when for every assignment or um, 
project that you have in your class. And these should be really short videos, so less than five minutes each. Video one can focus on the directions of that assignment and expectations. Video two, you're reviewing the grading rubric and how they'll be assessed. And then number three, you provide uh, one or more examples of what you're looking for. So that's something to try. Another thing to know is that feedback to students is really helpful. It's, it's a little thing that makes a really big difference. And so the remote teaching and learning series videos include two that are really focused on feedback. But when you think about feedback, uh, that includes your feedback to students, but it also includes their feedback to you. And so uh, I would encourage you to provide opportunities throughout the semester for them to give you some feedback on how things are going. And then the last thing that I would like to emphasize is individualized check-ins. And this means that you're reaching out to students to see how they're doing, and you're doing that on an individual basis. And so over here, Dr. Melissa Weller has kind of her template for how to communicate throughout a semester. She identifies some critical points when she either wants to send a video or a, an email, and then she creates a template so that she can modify it to be kind of individualized. And then she sets some calendar re reminders so that she'll uh, be able to be timely in that response. And with, with individualized communication and all communication within your course, the idea is to be able to say, I'm here, I'm aware of you, and I care. And, um, and if students can feel that and hear that, then they, they really step up and things go well. Here's one feature on Canvas that I really love because it helps create that individualized feel. If you go to an assignment page or the grade book and you click the three dots at the top, you can find a button that says message students who. And then from there, you can target students who either haven't turned in that assignment or who have scored above or below a certain threshold. And then you can send them an email message. And you create that email as a bulk email. So you just create it one time, but then it sends that message out to students so that, so that they receive it looking like it's an individual message. And uh, that can be really powerful. So over here is a link to a tutorial that shows you how to do that. So does increased online interaction between an instructor and student positively affect the student's perception of that, of course, quality? The answer is yes. And this is some research done by Dr. Jennifer Hunter and Braden Ross here at USU. So here's some things that they note in that, uh, in that article. Increased instructor to student interaction in an online class can vastly improve student experiences and perception of the course quality. However, interaction should be meaningful instead of trite or passive. Otherwise, too much interaction may have a reverse effect on the student experience. So here's what they suggest. Comments and messages that make a student feel respected, provide constructive correction, give credit where credit is due, and promote a sense of belonging are most effective in improving students' experience and perception of course quality. So my closing thought is students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I opened this with a quote by uh, Josh Eiler, who was one of our ETE seminar spirit, uh, series speakers recently, and also the author of this book, where he identifies five key things for supporting uh, learning. And he opens that book by describing one of his former professors, and this is what he says about him. He had this way of expecting that all of his students were going to do brilliant work and he made us believe it too. And really, that's the whole point. You want your students to feel this way. And I feel like if you're present, aware, and empathetic, they will feel this, and, and that you'll have a good experience even in a remote setting. So thank you for your time in viewing this. If you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me. Otherwise, I hope that we can connect uh, in some other way in the future. And that's all.